Well, hey there! I have a mystery for mm. you. Do you know that somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, there's an island you won't find in travel guides? No resorts or tourists. However, somehow, it has fans. It doesn't exist, but it has a name. Some maps show it, some don't bother. It's located at the point where the entire world begins, and it's marked with two zeros and named with one. This is the story of Null Island, a spot sitting exactly at zero degrees longitude and zero degrees latitude. But before I can fully explain everything, a brief reminder on how coordinates work. Maps are covered in lines that help with navigation. Those going sideways are called latitude. Covering from east to west, wrapping around the Earth kind of like belts. They measure how far north or south you are from the equator, the line right in the middle of the globe, halfway between the poles. Now, longitude lines go from top to bottom, north to south. They measure how far east or west you are from the starting line called the prime meridian. You make longitude and latitude cross, and you get two numbers that work like an address for any spot on Earth. That's how GPS operates, how planes find their way, and even how shipping routes and satellites are kept in check. It's a tried and proven system, so there's no reason to change it. But what makes it interesting is how old this concept actually is. Way back, more than 2200 years ago, a mathematician named Eratosthenes measured Earth's size. He didn't need ships or satellites to do it. He noticed that in one city, the sun cast no shadow at noon, while in another city far to the north, the same sun did cast a shadow. By measuring the angle of that shadow and knowing the distance between the two places, he calculated Earth's circumference. And amazingly, his answer was almost exactly what we still use today. Eventually, he produced the idea of dividing the globe into lines. About 100 years later, another mathematician, Hipparchus, used a 360-degree circle to assign numbers to every location. Then, sometime during the Age of Exploration, each country used its own starting point, which made sailing confusing. This was the case until, in 1884, important people reached the agreement that the world's zero line of longitude would run through Greenwich, England. Now, we've got this one universal grid – zero degrees latitude at the equator and zero degrees longitude at the prime meridian – and they meet at a single point. Which leads us to our mysterious, non-existent island, called Null Island. Upon zooming in on these coordinates, you won't find land, only the ocean. This spot lies in the Gulf of Guinea, about 370 miles off the coast of Ghana. It's part of a busy shipping region, but there's no island waiting for you. And yet, on digital maps, it's possible to see one marked there. It's an imagined place, located at the real location. It's a prank spot made up by mapmakers, a fake island dropped right at the coordinates 00. It started as an inside joke, but then it became super useful. Basically, when GPS or mapping software gets confused, it sometimes defaults the mistake straight to 00. Random pins, misplaced facilities, and even whole data sets that clearly don't belong in the middle of the Atlantic. They are digital errors collected in one spot, so the system doesn't break. Traveling to this part of the world just to see this digital landmark isn't exactly worth the trip. But right at those same coordinates, at one point, there was something real – a weather buoy. This is not a joke. It was part of an important climate project called Pirata, run by scientists from the US, France, and Brazil. This buoy gathered ocean and weather data to help predict stuff like rain in Africa or hurricanes in the Atlantic. It was decommissioned in 2021, so we're back to the location being an inside joke. How coincidental that at 00, zero there is literally nothing remarkable. However, there are searchable coordinates with weird, spooky, or amazing stuff that you can find with Google Earth. Places like Nagoro, Japan. At first glance, it looks like a sleepy little mountain village. But look closer, and you notice that the people there don't move. That's because they're not people at all. They're dolls. More than 350 of them. A local woman placed each one to stand in for a neighbor who had passed away or moved out. One for her father, one for a classmate, one for a farmer in the fields. 
Now, the dolls outnumber humans and make this place a beautiful, eerie, open-air museum of memories. Unless you are scared of life-size scarecrows. In that case, it's more like a horror movie. Then, there's the Blood Lake near Baghdad. When it appeared on Google Earth in 2007, it shocked anyone who saw it. The water looked pretty suspicious, garnering all kinds of rumors. The truth was more ordinary. Scientists say the color was likely caused by algae, pollution, or dye from nearby slaughterhouses. Over time, the lake returned to its normal color. However, the interesting bit is that the exact cause has never been officially confirmed. Even though the reason is probably biological, it's enough for the internet to remember this forever. Now, in Canada, we have a landscape that knows a trick or two. From the ground, it's just badlands. Nothing except eroded hills and valleys. However, if you raise a drone to look from above, you'll see the perfect outline of a human face wearing a Native American headdress. People only started to notice it in the early 2000s when satellite images became available for everyone. For years, locals had been walking and driving by it without thinking anything was out of the ordinary. No one carved it. Wind and rain did the work over thousands of years. Or maybe it's just the local spirit showing off. Either way, it's an awesome coincidence. This is similar to the Sudanese desert, where there's a rock formation nicknamed the Human Lips. Uh -huh. From ground level, you see sand and stones. But from above, you can spot an uncanny shape that resembles two perfect lips. It's just regular erosion. But the way it looks is so memorable that satellite pics made it viral online. Some people dubbed it the Kiss of Sudan, showing that even empty deserts can surprise you with a little humor. Meanwhile, in the middle of Turkmenistan's Karakum Desert lies one of the wildest places on the planet, the Gates of Hell. Officially, it's known as the Darvaza Crater, but calling it a crater just doesn't do it justice. It all kicked off decades ago when the ground caved in, and someone thought it would be smart to set fire to the gas leaking out to stop it from spreading. Mm -hmm. The plan was for a few weeks of flames. But here we are, over 50 years later, and it's still blazing away. During the day it looks like a smoldering pit, but at night? It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. Orange flames flicker against the dark desert, heat waves shimmering into the sky. People still make the journey to see it. There are no guardrails or amenities, just the vast desert and the sound of roaring fire. Some folks even camp out nearby, completely captivated by the glow. The last one is in Australia, and it's another example of nature creating something artistic by coincidence. It's the famous shipwreck of the SS Arfield. Built in 1911, the ship once carried cargo and even served as a transport vessel. Decades later, it was abandoned along with other decommissioned ships in the bay. But after humans left, nature claimed it and made it breathtaking. Basically, mangrove trees took root inside the ship's hollow frame, turning the wreck into something resembling a floating forest. It became a living landmark that locals now celebrate. There's so much more to explore, but we'll have to save some for another time. Hidden pentagrams in the steppe or airplanes lying silently under turquoise Bahamian waters. Once upon a time, maps were only used for traveling. But thanks to technology, exploring a 3D map has become a way to travel. It won't replace the real thing, but it can spark ideas for your next adventure or vacation. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.